Hey, welcome back to the Daily Download. This is a post-election edition, and I got to ask you the question. I mean, after all these months of campaigns and stress and anxiety and vote counting and uh, all the rest of it, is democracy even worth it? Let's talk about that today. Well, I am glad that you are here. And uh, this uh, this week, I've been thinking a little bit about uh, just a part of our Germany training we've done through the years that deals with Jesus as this huge game changer. Now, we know that Jesus is a game changer for us as individual. He changes our hearts. He grants us forgiveness. He brings us into his family, provides us a place to be, and helps us to become all that God created us to be on our way to being in heaven when this life is over with. I mean, Jesus is a game changer on the individual level, and that's for sure. But have you ever thought about the ways that Jesus is a game changer and the way that he's impacted the world that we live in, and specifically about some of the ideas that he taught and examples he provided who have literally changed everything. And one of those things that Jesus provided to the world that has changed everything is this notion of the worth of the individual, which I want to suggest to you today is the very foundation for democracy. And I wish I'd put all these ideas together on my own, but I'm actually indebted to this Game Changer series provided by Olive Tree Ministries, a, a group of believers that are in Australia that we use for our, our preparation and have been for, I don't know, the last decade or so. Well, the notion here is that in the teachings of Jesus, we see the seeds of democracy. Uh, you'll remember that on one occasion, Jesus is sort of talking to the disciples. He's teaching them about the way things are. And he says to them, you know, it's important that you remember that every individual is important. You know how the rulers, the Gentiles, ordered over them, not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you, he said, must be your servant. Just as the Son of Man did not come to serve, but to, uh, but, I mean, to be served, but to serve, so also you should go and give your life away as a ransom for others. Well, as Christians, we're called to be servants. Jesus came to serve, and he came to die for everyone, no matter who they are or what their background, what their race, rich, poor, or in between. No matter who they are, they were important to Jesus. And Jesus said that the way to lead in this world is to come as a servant. Now, this was a radical idea in Jesus' day, and it is still today. The way the world has normally worked, most places and most times in history, has a few powerful people have ruled over everybody else and used them to serve their needs, to help them become wealthier or stronger or more important or to maintain or consolidate power. I mean, this was the nature of being a king or a queen or a ruler or an emperor or whatever through history has been the structure by which people have governed. For a little while back before Jesus, the Greeks played around with the idea of democracy, but what they normally meant by that is that a few men who were especially smart and revered got to have some votes about some things. And this was sort of an early proto-democracy. But with Jesus, this notion that everyone is valuable would be the seed that over the course of time and through the influence of the church would begin to manifest itself in something that looked like democracy. In fact, some of the first democracies actually developed in local churches, and after uh, after the Reformation and uh, and and the sort of the separatist movement from the church in England in the 1600s, churches tried to figure out how they were going to handle their business, how were they were going to be handled and governed, and they came up with a congregational model. And what it meant is that everyone had a voice in what happened within that local church. Uh, these congregational churches uh, began to pop up all over Europe, uh, in England, and eventually, of course, in the United States. This was the normal way that most churches were run uh, in the 13 colonies. This idea of what it would be for people to govern themselves inside the church actually kind of leaked over into the way that people began to think about how governance should happen in a much broader area, and that is among, among cities, among states, and eventually among nations. And so uh, when you get to the founding fathers and that declaration of independence, this notion that the government should be of the people, for the people, and by the people, this idea, it really comes from Jesus. Everyone was to be conclude, included in this project of governance and leadership, and leadership was supposed to be an act of service and not an act of sort of self-aggrandizement or promotion or seeking of power. Now, these notions from Jesus seem powerful, they seem right, and sometimes in our common world, they seem a little bit foreign. 
we can see that sometimes politicians seem to be grabbing power for themselves, and there's collections of politicians that want to take care of their own, even if it means the hurting of others, but not so with Jesus. Well, across the course of time, these notions of democracy began to develop and grow, even within our own country and in Europe and other places, began to try democracy or put democracy in place. Uh, One of the first places that we see the growth of this is through, well, the democratic efforts of a guy by the name of William Wilberforce. Wilberforce is a group of Christians that are reading their Bible. They're seeking to find the right way to give leadership. He ends up in the House of Commons, the legislature in England, and he begins to promote the idea that everyone is created equal, everyone's valuable in the sight of God, and therefore slavery should end. The slave trade should come to an end. England should quit buying and allowing the buying and selling of people within its borders. Now, this was a radical idea in the 1700s when he began first promoting this notion. And you've got to remember that for all of human history, there have been slaves. And now all of a sudden, this Jesus idea of the worth of individuals bubbles up in the heart of this group of Christians in England, and Wilberforce becomes the voice that begins to push for an end to slavery. This idea, of course, was the seedbed for the abolition movement in the United States and eventually would lead to an end to slavery in the United States. Who's behind it all? Jesus and his thoughts about the worth of the individual and even the notion of democracy that would make such a thing possible because of a groundswell of support by lots of voting individuals. Uh, We pass forward across time in the suffrage movement. The idea that it shouldn't just be men but women who should vote was also led by a lot of Christian women in America who said, hey, the idea that everybody is a part of a democracy should mean everybody. And so women got the right to vote. Eventually, people who were of other nationalities, specifically those who were black, were allowed to vote in America because of this notion. And who's behind it all? Well, this Jesus, the same Jesus whose church first said that in Christ there is no slave nor free, there is no Jew nor Gentile, there is no male nor female. This notion that we're all equal is a Jesus idea, and it is at the rock bed. It's the foundation of democracy in and of itself. Eventually, in the 1950s and early 1960s, it is a Christian pastor by the name of Martin Luther King Jr. who steps forward with a dream that everyone would be treated equally, and of course, a Civil Rights Act, and a great deal of progress was made in our country. And what's behind it all? The teachings of Jesus, the Christian church moving forward, these ideas of the value of the individual as we move forward in history. Well, it's 2024, and however you're feeling about this election cycle, I want to say today that I think democracy is indeed worth fighting for. This notion that every individual ought to have a voice, that every individual is valuable, that we don't want to be controlled and we don't want rulers, not a few corporate heads, not a few wealthy individuals, not a few political wonks who are in the right place and from the right educational background. Everyone in America should have a voice in how we are governed. And all those who govern should see that they come as servants. As Jesus said, anyone who wants to be great certainly should. When you get in the ballot box and you vote, when I vote, we're acting as individuals who are seeking God's will and trying to follow our conscience. We're trying to, we're trying to help support our country. We want to be servant-hearted in the way we go about it. All of those things, that democracy has its seedbed in the teachings of Jesus. Jesus Christ was indeed a great world changer, a game changer in human history. And as you think about democracy, be grateful for this gift that Jesus gave to the world. Not just his life that we could know forgiveness and and reconciliation with God, but a political ideology that would allow everyone to be valuable, valuable and valued and have a voice as we seek to figure out the way that we will live and the way that we will be led. I hope you guys have a great afternoon and look forward to seeing you tomorrow.